I've been driving this 2021 Chevy Blazer RS all-wheel drive for the last week, and today we're going to talk about what I liked and disliked about it. So as a upper tier trim with the RS, this has the 3.6 liter naturally aspirated V6. It makes 308 horsepower and 270 pound-feet of torque. Lower tier trims of the Blazer could be optioned with a non-turbo four-cylinder and a turbocharged four-cylinder. And also to note, the lower tier trims are front-wheel drive only. This is a front wheel drive based platform but on the rs all wheel drive is standard we'll talk a little bit more about the various drive modes once we're inside the vehicle so all wheel drive 3.6 liter v6 nine speed automatic transmission is the only transmission option on this vehicle and when configured um, it can tow up to 4500 pounds now as the more upper tier rs trim this is the more sporty iteration and before we even dig into that just look at it it's it's not off-road focused at all this is the more on-road sleek sporty looking crossover and i definitely know that upset some people with the application of the blazer name but if you just look at this thing it does certainly look very aggressive and dare i say very camaro inspired Look at these thin, aggressive daytime running lights up front with the illumination below split. You get the blacked out uh, front badges, the blazer lettering on the side, lettering around the back, this kind of black chrome trim around the big blacked out grill. Again, this is the RS trim, so it's going to be the most aggressive looking. The black and red contrast of this red cherry tent coat does look very nice. Riding on 20 inch wheels. Now, this is a front wheel drive platform. It is on-road focus, but with the RS trim, I actually like driving it this week. I think it looks really good. I remember when it first launched, I was like, wow, that really does look, they took Camaro styling or Corvette styling and applied it to like a crossover. Look at those taillights. They're very, very much Camaro inspired and it definitely looks sporty. Now, the Blazer name definitely upset some people that it's not like an off-road focus type of vehicle, not solid body on frame, all the type of stuff that um, the traditional one used to be like, but spending time with this driving it, I've actually um, got the like the way it looks and like the way it drove. Before we start driving, let's talk about a couple of the things that I really like and I dislike. And some of these things are ones that I've learned while spending time and over a thousand miles in this vehicle this past week. The first one is the climate control dials here. They are, if you've been in a newer generation Camaro, they'll be very familiar, but it's got this big circular ring with the red trim on it. And as you rotate it to the right and left or clockwise slash counterclockwise, you would get a change in your temperature with a little screen that displays that. And then within that, you can actually rotate another dial that opens and closes these little kind of veins that will control your airflow coming in and out of the individual one. So it's a really cool way of integrating this. Now, again, it's the same as you would find in like a Camaro. I believe it's exactly identical, but it makes it feel a little sportier. And I actually liked using it quite a bit. Above that, you still have all the actual physical buttons for heated and ventilated seats, changing where the airflow is going, changing the airflow speed. Something else that I really like too is the uh, trunk opening. You can actually control whether it's the max opening height when you press the button or three quarters or off. Off, you just click it and it pops open and you manually open it. So that's cool if you have maybe a, a low hanging ceiling in the garage or something where you can't open your trunk to the max range. And then also with opening the trunk, now this is something that I discovered by living with the car for a week. I noticed below the rear bumper, there was the projection of a little outline of the Chevy bow tie and LED. And I'm like, why is it off centered? I wonder what that is. So I kicked my foot over it and it's the kind of the hands-free trunk release. So you kick your foot over it and it opens. Now that hands-free kicking underneath the bumper that exists, but in this vehicle, there was a little like light that illuminated. So that was a cool touch. Now, some of the things that I did not like this steering wheel, not a fan of, I, I just, I just don't like it. Part of it's the size, like it's nice that is trimmed in leather and it is heated, which is a nice touch now that it's getting cold, but I don't know, it just doesn't feel premium or nice. And like, I especially hate when they have this plastic trim around here, like when you have your hands on a steering wheel at nine and three, and it's just this hard plastic underneath, the buttons are easy to access and easy to use. And there's volume and uh, audio track changing stuff behind the steering wheel, but it doesn't feel great. It feels like something you'd find in like a pickup truck and actually might be a Silverado steering wheel. And that cascades into the fact that in a vehicle of this price range, you really want all the stuff that you're touching to be nice. This specific one is an RS with some options on it. Stickers for $48,000. It's a lot. And you can get them to $50,000. So I know it's the top trim and it's got like all the nice features. The driver assist stuff with adaptive cruise lane, keep assist, heated cooled seats. Like it's got the bigger engine, all wheel drive and so forth. But almost 50 grand for a Chevy crossover. You're like, whoa, that's actually kind of surprising. Now, that being said, 
spending a week with this vehicle, a lot of miles, took two long trips back and forth to Michigan and back, um, Chicago back and forth. It's, it's not bad at all. The fact that I was able to do a five hour stint without stopping to stretch a discomfort or whatever, had the fuel range to handle a 300 mile drive without a problem, that to me is, is a big win because that meant the road noise was not unbearable. Um, didn't get excessively fatigued by uncomfortable seats or cramped positioning or anything like that. Adaptive cruise control going to lane keep assist, had my Apple uh, CarPlay running. It does have wireless CarPlay and I was just like, all right, let's go. So from that regard, it's actually very, very nice. With the powertrain, this V6 makes good power at this vehicle's weight paired to that nine speed. It, it's decently quick actually for its size. Um, I don't know if I'd want the little four cylinder or front wheel drive, so this is going to be the one. Now it's not really sporty per se, so we've got the drive dials now. We've got, well, wait, before I get into that, it's not sporty given what I usually drive. Like, um, now would be a good time to talk about the drive mode. So it's got this little dial here, rotary dial, and it has X2 with like road symbol. And I was like, wait, what? Times two of road? No, it's two wheel drive. And that is unfortunately the front wheels being driven because of this platform. But if you have all wheel drive, you rotate the dial. It goes into X4 and the all wheel drive light flashes and turn solid and now I am in all-wheel drive mode now one more turn over gets you into a sport mode which you immediately feel the transmission drop a gear I think um, and then we have some other drive modes I think it's a towing one and maybe like inclement weather type of thing but with all-wheel drive and I am in sport mode now and that is an Oakland County Sheriff so I am not gonna do an acceleration that I thought I was gonna do um, but I, I did that earlier on in my time with this vehicle and I actually went into some dirt roads and um, not off road, just like up and through some muddy ruts and stuff like that. So I was able to handle it without a problem, but this is nowhere close to being like Wrangler, any of the Jeeps or uh, the new Bronco, Bronco Sport type of off road. This is entirely an on road focused crossover. And in trying to accomplish that, I think Chevy did a quite good job. I mean, I put a lot of miles on this thing. It's Let's see, 1,057 miles, averaging 23 MPG. A lot of it was freeway driving, but it's been comfortable. It looks really cool on the outside. I actually really think it looks cool. It's probably the most aggressive looking, cohesively best looking um, SUV crossover in the Chevy lineup, in my opinion. Driving it, no massive objections. It does seem a little bit pricey, especially compared to the competitors. And because it's more kind of the style focused vehicle, I would compare it to something like maybe an Edge ST good power what i would love to see and i don't know if this would ever happen but like imagine they did a blazer ss and they put um the three liter twin turbo v6 that was in like the cadillac ct5v that i was just driving that would be a pretty cool combination in this sporty looking thing imagine having your chevy camaro ss one le as your summer toy your track toy your autocross toy and then you have your blazer ss one LE, track focused little crossover. I mean, they make those things. Look at an X3M competition. People will buy that. Chevy, you should do that. But circling back to a couple things, look, there's another Blazer over there. They must be selling quite well, actually. I've seen a lot. And the RS trim is the sportier one. You get this red cross stitching with soft touch trim on the um, entire console over there. We've got nice seats that are, like I mentioned, heated and cooled. No massage function though, but again, that, that would be something you expect in a Cadillac. Otherwise, good headroom, good space out back, good cargo. That <laughs> The back of the trunk there is packed with camera equipment and like two backpacks and a laptop bag and a Pelican case. So like it, it, it will fit a lot of stuff in it. But overall, the 2021 Chevy Blazer RS all wheel drive, I've liked spending a week with it. I enjoyed it. If I was shopping for a Chevy vehicle for a family or you wanted something that looks really cool too and is able to get you around places, um, and have some nice creature comforts to it, it's a good option. Other cool touches that the Blazer has, we have wireless CarPlay, a wireless charging pad that's optional, but my iPhone is sitting right on there. Chevy also launched this like streaming service that you can use the vehicle's onboard um, data to like have a tablet or something, an app and stream TV shows and movies. Overall, I enjoyed my time with this vehicle. Yes, it does seem relatively expensive in this segment, but as justified, it has nicer features to it, all-wheel drive, towing capacity, um, and the bigger engine. So if you are going cheaper, like if you want to stay in that $30,000 price range, you can get a front-wheel drive, a 1LT, 2LT something with the 2-liter turbocharged four-cylinder. You would still get the 9-speed automatic transmission and so forth. But 
I'm whipping roundabouts in the Chevy Blazer. I'm in sport mode, so it must be sporty. Wee. There it is. That is my time living with the Chevy Blazer. A couple really cool things I found out. Nice little touches that are thoughtful and unique. It definitely looks aggressive. It looks like it should have like an LT1 sitting on the hood or something like that. Maybe they'll do that at some point. But despite all of that, a couple little minor complaints. The steering wheel, I'm, I'm finicky about steering wheels. I'm very picky. Like I don't even like the one on my Shelby. I'm going to probably change that too. Um, but regardless, this is the 2021 Chevy Blazer RS all-wheel drive. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.